If you've spent much time on social media, particularly sites like Instagram or Pinterest, you've probably seen them. All of the inspiring, encouraging quotes that say things like, you are amazing and you got this and you go girl and everything that you need is right inside you. You can go create your dream life. It is all up to you. You can do it. We are cheering you on. And while messages like these can be really encouraging, especially if we are feeling a sense of guilt or shame or feeling like we're not enough, unfortunately, they can have a negative unintended side effect as well. And that is that sometimes when we get too caught up in these messages of you are enough and you are amazing, we forget that we aren't the ones on the throne. All too often, we can get so caught up in self-help and making ourselves amazing and doing all of the things ourselves that we forget that God gave us somebody very special who helps us be these amazing Christian women that we want to be. And of course, today I am talking about the Holy Spirit. So in the Bible, Jesus tells us that when he left, he would send somebody who is even more amazing, who would help us. And the Bible promises us that the Holy Spirit has so much power for us and so much goodness for us that when we walk according to the Holy Spirit and in step with his will for our lives, that it just empowers us and encourages us in a way that standard self-help just can't do. Now, I am a big fan of self-help. I do love it. However, we need to make sure that we're not just settling for or our one, two, three steps to make ourselves amazing. And instead, we're setting that aside to really pay attention to, okay, God, what do you have for me today? What do you want for me to do in my life? What is it? Like, what's your plan? How do I do that? How do I um, get a hold of everything that God wants for me? And how do I use the Holy Spirit to help me do whatever it is? Whether that is my big mission and purpose in life, God's will for my life, he tells us that the Holy Spirit will come alongside us and help us with that. Or even if it's just in the day to day, how do I be a good wife to my husband? How do I be a good mom to my kids? And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit has so much for us in terms of empowering us and encouraging us in a way that self-help just can't do. So that's why today I am so excited to speak with Jeannie Cunyon, author of the brand new book, Don't Miss Out, Daring to Believe Life is Better with the Holy Spirit. If you are someone who is ready to just step in to all that God has for you, you want to be that amazing Christian woman, you want to be that amazing wife and mother that God is calling you to be, and you want to walk the path that God has for you and do his will for your life, but you feel like maybe you're not enough, you can't do it on your own, and you're not sure where the balance is between, okay, how much do I hustle and push for this? How hard do I need to work? What are the steps I need to do? And when do I just rest and let the Holy Spirit do his work within me? Well, that's what we're talking about in today's episode. And let me tell you, you will not want to miss out. All right, Jeannie, I am so excited to speak with you today. Will you start us off just by telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do and anything we might want to know up front? Sure. My name is Jeannie Cunyon. I um, am married to Mike. We live in Connecticut uh, and we have five boys. Um, our boys range from five to 24. So uh, we kind of have one in every stage of life, which is fun and exhausting all at the same time. Um, I grew up as a preacher's kid and have a master's in social work. I worked in the adoption field for about 15 years before I felt the Lord leading me to start writing uh, back around 2013. Um, and so Don't Miss Out is my fourth book. Um, and the one that I definitely um, challenged me the most, uh, but has brought the greatest reward. So I'm really excited to talk to you today about everything the Lord's taught me as I've studied who he is and who his spirit is and all the benefits to having him in our lives. Well, I'm so excited to talk with you about your book, Don't Miss Out, because I feel like it's something that so many Christian women need right now, but don't even realize it. So I'm hoping that as we have this conversation today, everybody who is listening is going to have just so many light bulb moments and aha <laughs> moments so that they'll want to go out and grab your book after listening to this. Um, so uh -huh. basically, tell us a little bit about what your book is about and who it's for. The book is called Don't Miss Out, and the subtitle is Daring to Believe That Life is Better with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so that's really what it's about. It's this welcome invitation to discover who the Holy Spirit is, what he does, and why it matters so much. 
Um, I wrote the book because I was missing out. Um, several years ago, I was just praying to the Lord. Uh, I just, I want all of you. I just, Lord, I want every part. I want everything you have to give me. And I don't mean that in a kind of material blessing kind of way. I just wanted him. I wanted more of his presence, uh, a deeper understanding of his love. And his answer to that prayer, I just want more of you, was to begin to stir this thirst in me to know who his spirit is. That's really the only way I know how to describe it. And and honestly, that was an unexpected answer. I didn't think that would be his answer. You know, I want to re, it was really a reintroduction is the way I think about it. The Lord was reintroducing me to his spirit. The Lord just took me on this journey. I just began to study scripture and, and suddenly the Holy Spirit was in verses where I had never noticed his name before. But the question that I really had to ask myself was, but do I know what that really means? Do I really know how to live in the power of the Holy Spirit? Do I know how to um, live by the power of the Holy Spirit? And so those are some of the things that began to happen in my life and just made me really hungry to know who he is. Um, And pretty quickly into that walk with the Lord, I got a pretty clear sense that he was going to ask me to start or was leading me to start writing about that um, so that I could share with others what, what he wanted to show me. And so that's really how the book came about. I ended up breaking it up into 30 short chapters, and each one focuses on a particular benefit to the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. My question that I started with was, what does he do? And the question I finished with was, what doesn't he do? What doesn't he do? He does so much more than I think most of us uh, understand. And so I did my best to break that down into kind of bite-sized chapters and share that with Um, others who might really want to have a better understanding of the Holy Spirit's role in their life. So let's talk a little bit about what these things are that the Holy Spirit does or that he promises us, because let me give you a little bit of background for you or anybody who's listening. As a Christian blogger, online entrepreneur, writer, all the things, I see so often, and this is not just exclusive to like online business owners, but it's definitely in this space, is I see two very different perspectives. And one is the hustle culture, which if you are at all involved in any kind of online thing, like you have probably seen all of the like online gurus who are like, oh, you have to work hard and you have to work all the hours and you have to do all the things and you have to like, it's on you and work all the hours of every day and like go learn all the strategies and do all the things. There's definitely a hustle culture out there. But then what I also see a lot of, especially in the Christian living space, is that there's so many people who go the complete opposite direction, where they will say, oh, well, if it's meant to be, it will be. And well, if this is God's plan, it'll happen. It'll work out. Don't worry about it. If it's God's will for your life, like you don't even have to try, it will just happen. And so I see these two conflicting messages so often that I feel like so many of us can get hold into one camp or the other. And I don't think either one is really a good, accurate description. Um, But so often I think we fall into these camps without even realizing it when we're on social media and there's so much like girl boss or like, you're the best or like, you're the mom and you can do it because you have the power and the power is within you. And all these just messages I see of you can do it versus, oh, you don't have to do it at all. And the Holy Spirit's going to do all of it for you. So can you just give us a little bit of clarity on, okay, what does the Holy Spirit actually offer us? Yeah. I saw, um, speaking of social media, I was scrolling through the social media this is a while back. And uh, the girl who popped up on the screen was wearing a shirt that said, everything you need is inside of you. Mm-hmm. And I know what her shirt meant, which is you're a boss, babe, your inner strength, you know, you're superwoman. But my mind immediately thought about that is true because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. And so I think that's a really fair thing to say if we're referring to the resurrection power of God that is given to every single one of us when we put our trust in Jesus versus the idea that everything is inside of me because I am female, hear me roar, and I'm going to muster up all this greatness and then go do great things. Um, And so it's a really empowering, I think, I mean, honestly, think about this, because we hear all these messages about, you know, you've, like you said, you've got what it takes and um, everything you need is inside of you and you're enough and all those things. But what is more empowering than for a believer to recognize and really live from the confidence 
that the almighty God put his spirit inside of you, that the resurrection power of Jesus Christ has been given to you at the moment you put your trust in Jesus and that you were actually designed to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, that is so that is so empowering, right? To know that we are given the Holy Spirit. And so I do believe that we were made to work from rest, right? That we have to be abiding and we have to know that we are not God and is through rest that we remember that he is sovereign and we are not. Um, but I also believe that the Bible tells us to, um, to work hard, not, not to talk, I'm not talking about the hustle culture, but I think, um, you know, I, the Lord wants us to use the gifts he's given us to glorify him and to build the kingdom. And so I just love the idea that we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we don't have to muster up what it takes. What we have to be doing is we have to be yielding to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We have to be submitting to his authority and staying in step with him. I love that when Paul writes about um, if you if you live by the spirit, then walk by the spirit, stay in step with the spirit. In other words, there are actionable steps that we have to take, right? We can't just say, I have the Holy Spirit, so now I can kick up my feet, watch Netflix and, and watch him do his thing. We have to stay in step with the spirit. So one foot in front of another, um, walking, uh, being guided by the Holy Spirit, because that's one of the things that the Lord gave him to do for us is to guide us, to guide our lives. And so I wish it was, it would be easy if there was a formula, right? Like A, B, C, D, these are the boxes you check and this is how you live by the spirit. But our God is so relational that what he's saying is, you know, abide in me, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so abide in me, be empowered by my spirit and then seek my will. Uh, and I will, I will guide you in the path you should go. Um, but it requires trust. It requires a tenderness to his spirit. Um, and it requires the willingness to yield to his authority in our lives, right? So we participate, I think what it boils down to for, for those of us who are like kind of, well, how do you make that practical? I think the reality is we participate by our obedience, but we have to recognize that we, we don't produce holiness in our lives, right? So how do we participate in the spirit's work? By obeying the Lord, but the holiness is produced in our lives by the Holy Spirit. We can't produce holiness. We don't produce the fruit of the spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit produces that, but that is the manifestation of a heart yielded to the authority of God in our lives. So how can we know if we are truly living according to the spirit or if we are trying too hard to do things on our own? Because I know that there's not like a step-by-step, -step. this is exactly what it looks like. But for somebody who's saying, okay, I want to do the right thing. I want to walk in step with the Holy Spirit, but I know I can't leave it all up to him. I can't just go rush off and do it all on my own. How can I, is there any kinds of questions I can ask myself or red flags or things I can look out for that I can say, okay, I'm on the right track or maybe I'm veering off and I'm, you know, trusting myself too much and putting it all on me or maybe, you know, somehow going off course. I think for me, one of the main signs for me is, is there, is there fruit in my life? Because I think we can be very productive, but productive is different than being fruitful, right? So when I am trying to do life in the, in the strength of genie, oftentimes I'm getting a lot done. I'm very productive, but I'm not very fruitful. Is there joy? Is there peace? Is there patience? Is there gentleness with my children? Is there self-control? And so when we are staying in step with the spirit, his character, which is the fruit, uh, will manifest in our lives. And when we're not, it's, it's going to look very different than what Paul lays out as the fruit of the spirit. So for me, that's kind of a sign um, of if I'm staying in step with the spirit, I think about when Jesus said, you know, my, my, um, my burden is easy. My, my, the yoke is easy. Um, I know when I'm living from a place of exhaustion, uh, where I've kind of taken things back into my own hands, right. Where it's just this, it's this need to control. It's this need to see results and outcomes for my effort. And, um, so for me personally, it's just the continual, going back to the Lord in relationship and saying, Lord, I trust you. I want to follow you. It's again, it's also relational. Um, and I think it looks different for all of us, right? Because we're wired so differently. I'm a very like type A doer. And so that can get in the way of my ability to say, all right, Holy Spirit, 
give me peace about this thing or, or hold me back. For instance, you know, a couple of years ago, I was doing a lot of speaking and all of a sudden I couldn't get peace. Every request that came in, I just didn't have peace about saying yes. And honestly, I, at the beginning, I kind of mistook that as punishment. Like I, I was having this conversation with the Lord, like, well, Lord, what did I do? You know, is there sin in my life that, that you need to show me that, um, you don't want me speaking, um, are there circumstances in my life that aren't glorifying you? And I, and I, I was questioning kind of this, why can't I get peace about saying yes to opportunities to go share the gospel? But thankfully I, I listened and I obeyed. I just, I said, I just can't accept invitations. And I just began to stay quiet and stay home and, and sit with the Lord in that time. And, and it became very, very clear to me soon after that all of the reasons why the Lord wanted me at home, more at home in that season of my life. He knows that my main ministry is to my children and to my husband. Um, he knew that we'd soon take in a, I couldn't have seen it coming, but he knew we'd soon take in a foster child who was going to require an incredible amount of tender, loving care. He knew that my mom was going to fall ill and she's always the one who comes and stays with our kids and, and helps out. And my mom became sick. And so she had to stay home with my dad. And so all of these things were going to be happening, which, um, and it was also during that time that the Lord began to stir my heart of desire to know his spirit more. So I think, um, you know, his peace is, is such a, is such a generous way for him that he communicates with us when he gives us peace about moving forward or being still and being quiet and just trusting his timing, which is a very, very hard thing for most of us to do. I know it sure is for me waiting on the Lord, right? Instead of uh, forging ahead when we don't have a space, waiting on him is so hard, isn't it? Um, when we have good ideas or creative things that we want to do for the kingdom, and then we we don't have peace about that. And so waiting just makes no sense to us. And I think about, you know, the disciples in the book of Acts, where Jesus said, do not go do anything until, um, until the Holy Spirit comes. You have to wait right? Just go and wait for me to send my Holy Spirit for you to go do the good things I've given you to do. And the Holy Spirit didn't, the disciples didn't know when the Holy Spirit would come, but they waited. And, you know, as we know from the gospels, they weren't always good <laughs> at obeying Jesus. They weren't always good at trusting what he told them to do, but thankfully they waited. And I can't imagine uh, what Christianity, how different it would look if they didn't have the courage to wait on the Lord to do what he said he would do for them. Yeah. And that's such, I love how you shared your own story there as well, because that's such an important thing to wait on the Holy spirit. And I know how frustrating, you know, for myself as well, how frustrating it can be. And I have had conversations with other people lately who have said, you know, I want to do things, but I don't know, like, I don't know what God's calling me to do, or I don't know what the next step is. Um, but just the fact that the Holy Spirit knows what's coming. He knows what's coming around the corner. He knows what big things he has for you. And if you are somebody who's stuck in that like girl boss mode where you're like, no, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to take this course. And I'm going to do this. And you know, everything I need is inside of me. So I'm just going to like, it's all on me. I'm going to make it happen. Um, it's just a completely different perspective than if you're saying, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want? What, you know, what do you want for me? When do you want it? When is it going to work out? Like, he's got the plan. He's got the perfect plan. We just need to follow along with his plan. And that means being in prayer and being willing to listen. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that as well. Cause I love that that was like a practical example of why God can ask us to wait. Um, will you answer another question for me? Because we've been talking a lot about, we don't want to do too much ourselves. We also don't want to get into the mindset of taking that too far to say, Oh, self-help is wrong or bad, or, oh, we need to stay away from the people who are teaching all of these things, or we need to, you know, not do things ourselves. How can we, are there any things that we should look out for or red flags or warning signs if we are seeing messages online that we can say, okay, yes, this is biblical. Um, I should listen to this advice or, you know, this is really veering more into the do it yourself in a bad way sort of mentality. Yeah. I think one of the things that I have to do is I have to check my motive. Um, is what I'm doing about glorifying me and what I can accomplish and trying to put the spotlight on me, or is it all about wanting everything I do to glorify God, to put the spotlight on Jesus and what only he can accomplish in my life. I can, I have so many examples of, of times where I, I've hustled and worked hard and tried to make something happen. Um, 
to really no meaningful gain. And then other times where I've just been seeking the Lord's will for my life and being open to what he's calling me to do, um, no matter how big or how small, because some things I have felt nudged to do have been very small and menial and other things have felt incredibly scary, like writing this book. I, I gave the Lord no rest, no less than 10 reasons why he had the wrong girl for the job, right? Who am I to write a book about the Holy Spirit, right? Only highly trained theologians like Billy Graham or Francis Chan should be, should be writing these books. Um, and I think it's so fun to trust him, you know, because what we know for certain is that the Lord will, he absolutely will. He cannot not equip us for the things that he calls us to do. And so um, there's a trust that that comes into that, right? Where we have to, we have to be willing to be courageous and step out in faith when we do feel him nudging us to do things that feel far bigger than us. When he, when he's asking us, I mean, I had, I had to work very hard. Um, in writing this book, but it was, there was beautiful reward and, and, but it wasn't like a low, it wasn't a heavy hard, right? It was just this, this digging into scripture, studying, being challenged, asking questions and, and allowing the Lord to reveal himself to me through scripture, through the Holy Spirit. And so I think the Lord does ask to do us to do hard things and courageous things, but it's never without the power of the Holy Spirit to do those things. Um, and so you know, following Jesus is an incredible adventure. Um, I think one of the things I write about in the book is that self-help is greater or spirit help is greater than self-help, right? So I'm not knocking self-help, so to speak. Um, but I would ask somebody this question. Why settle? Why settle for self-help when God has given you spirit help? We're, we're settling. That's what it is. We are settling for natural results, natural outcomes, natural strength, human flesh frailty. When we try to create change in our lives and our own strength, we're just settling, right? God is saying, I have given you my spirit. He can transform you, right? The best we can do is kind of touch ups, right? We can touch up things in our lives. Um, the spirit transforms us. He utterly transforms us from the inside out. And so my encouragement would be, it's not that I want to throw self-help under the bus, but why would we settle for that when we have been given, been given the spirit of God who, who wants to empower us in our inner beings to follow Jesus, to fulfill the divine God-given purpose that's been put on our lives, uh, all for the glory of the father. And so I think a lot of, I mean, for me, a red flag is, is anytime there is self-glorification, uh, when somebody's message is how to be like me, how to succeed like me, how to, how to do this thing like me, um, a self-glorifying life is a, is a sign, uh, of a lack of activity of the spirit in that person's life. And we're all, we're all guilty of it because we're all human and we all sin, um, but the question is, when we become aware of that, do we repent and put Jesus back on the throne where he belongs? Or do we try to climb back up, uh, up there and say, look at me, be like me, follow me. Um, I've got all the answers. Um, and so I love being taught by and listening to people whose lives shine the spotlight on Jesus, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Ultimately, his ultimate goal is to make much of Jesus. Jesus said, he will glorify me. Um, and so I want my life to glorify Jesus. And my life will glorify Jesus when I am yielded to the spirit, because the spirit in me will help me shine a light on the one who saved me. Um, so that's always a red flag for me. And then looking for people whose lives shine the spotlight on Jesus. Those are the people I want to learn from. Well, thank you so much for our conversation today. Before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you would love to share that you feel like you didn't have a chance to yet? Um, I would just encourage your listeners to, to um, open themselves up to, to who the Holy Spirit is and what he wants to do in their lives. I think there are so many stigmas attached to the Holy Spirit. There are so many misconceptions and myths about him because of the way we've seen his power used and abused. Um, and I think there's this belief that the Holy Spirit is either for the super spiritual or for the super strange, 
right? That he really has gotten kind of pushed in one of those two extremes. And so Christians who just want to seek Jesus and follow Jesus um, haven't had a lot of introduction to or exposure to the beauty of the Holy Spirit for our everyday life. And so I would just encourage everybody to open themselves up to the Holy Spirit because Jesus told the disciples before he ascended to the Father, he said, um, it is for your good that I return to the Father so that the Holy Spirit will come. And so if Jesus told us, the disciples and us, that the Holy Spirit is for our good and that he's to our advantage, um, then we should we should listen up and we should get to know him uh, because he is um, essential. He is essential to a thriving Christian life. Um, so just daring, daring each one of us, including me, to believe that life is better with the Holy Spirit and to get to know him and to welcome his activity in our lives. Well, thank you so much for all of your wisdom today, Jeannie. Um, it has been wonderful talking with you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to join you. All right, that just about does it for today's episode. If you would love to hear more on this topic, I would highly encourage you to check out Jeannie's new book, Don't Miss Out, and we'll link it in the show notes below. And then once you've done that, the next thing I'm always going to recommend is the best way to get to know the Holy Spirit is by reading God's Word. And if you are somebody who isn't in God's Word as often as you would like to be, you want to read the Bible more, but you don't know how to start or how to keep consistent in reading God's Word, then I have the resource just for you. And that is my brand new book, Fall in Love with God's Word, Practical Strategies for Busy Women, where I will help you like super step-by-step, -step, practically speaking, here is how you create a Bible reading routine. Here's how you understand the word. And here is how you create just this quiet time that you love, that you look forward to, that truly is life-changing with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to link both of those in the show notes below. Hopefully this has been an interesting and very helpful and encouraging episode for you today. So as always, if you have not already, I would encourage you go ahead and subscribe. We come back regularly with new interviews that are inspiring and encouraging to help you be the amazing Christian woman that God has created you to be. So go ahead, check out those books, subscribe, and I will see you again real soon. All right. Bye.